the Sea of Wonder! Sea of Wonder! Come on now, let's a dive it down under! Featuring Swedish sea Jack! Of sea of Wonder! Come on now, let's a dive it down under! Seymour Crash! Sea of Wonder! Sea of Wonder! Come on now, let's a dive it down under! Hello, 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 and welcome to the Sea of Wonder. I be Swedish Jack, and this be Seymour Krabs. Charmed, I'm sure. And everyone give it up for Seymour and the Blowfish Band. Oh, thank ye, thank ye. Now, welcome aboard me ship where we will be discovering new things about God and his word together. Oh, uh, you know, Jack, I've been working on a few new jokes to be telling our friends out there. You mind if I try a few of them out? Um, sure, Seymour, go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Why are fish so smart? Because they live in schools. You get it? Because cause schools of fish? Oh, no, I, I got it, Seymour. Try this one on for size. How do you make an octopus laugh? With tentacles. Cause tentacles? <laughs> oh, thank goodness you're here, Carl. <laughs> That's perfect, Carl, thank you. Wait, did he just say that your shipment of fruit has arrived? Aye, we got some fruit for what we'd be talking about over the next few episodes. We're talking about fruit? Aye, oh, but it is a very special fruit. Ah, the Jabuti Kaba. The what? The Jabuti Kaba. What on earth is that, Seymour? It sounds like a dance or a shampoo for fancy people. No, Jack. The Jabuti Kaba is a rare fruit that grows on the trunk and branches of the Jabuti Kaba tree in Brazil. Let's show a picture. They're quite tasty, but they look like grapes growing on a bunch of barnacles. Um, well, that's very interesting, Seymour. Thank you for sharing with us about the Babuni Samba fruit. Jabuti Kaba. Okay. But that's not the fruit that we're talking about. See, I'll explain in a moment. But first, let's pray and invite the Holy Spirit into this time. Holy Spirit, we give you our minds, our hearts, and our attention. You are welcome into this time to teach us more about you. We ask that you speak, Lord. Your servants are listening. Amen. Amen. Now, Jack, what kind of fruit are we going to be talking about? Ah, yes, the fruit of the Spirit. What? That must be extremely rare. I've never eaten a fruit of the Spirit before. Well, it's not a fruit for eating, Seymour. You mean it's for looking at? No, no. See, the fruit of the Spirit is an actual fruit. Well, then what are they? They are nine good traits or nine good things that come from God. And we're going to be talking about all nine of them together. In fact, Seymour, I think that we should read over our memory verse together, and that'll help you understand what these good things are. Okay, perfect. All right, repeat after me, everyone. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These things are always good. Galatians 5, 22 through 23. Great job, everyone. Thank you, Jack. Now, all those things sound like feelings or emotions or actions, but why does the Bible call them fruit? Well, Seymour, when we have a question about what something means, we can go to the Bible for answers. And I think I've got the answer in Matthew... Yes, Matthew chapter 7, verse 15. See, Jesus is talking about knowing the difference between people teaching wrong and right. Listen to this. Jesus said, watch out for false prophets and teachers who come 
appearing like sheep, gentle and innocent. For inside, they are like savage wolves. By their fruit, you will recognize them. You cannot pick grapes from a thorn bush, and you cannot gather figs from weeds. In the same way, every good tree produces good fruit, and bad trees produce bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Every tree that does not produce good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. You will know these false prophets by what they produce. So Jesus basically was saying that people with evil plans will do evil things even though they're calling it good? Exactly. So as followers of Jesus, we need to be producing and, and doing good things that God likes. Yes, Seymour. Like the nine things you listed off. Yes, now how about we see which fruit we be talking about today? Oh aye, let's do it. Right, Carl, bring in the first fruit. <coughs> Thank you, Carl. All right, it looks like we have love. Oh, how precious. So God wants us to send people nice cards and, and get married and create love songs and such. Well, those things are nice, but not quite, Seymour. See, God's love is true love. We can say things like, I love fishing, or we can say, I love you to a family member. But love in the Bible is defined differently. So let's look at this in 1 Corinthians 13. Okay. Love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous. It does not brag and it is not proud. Love is not rude. It is not selfish and does not become angry easily. Love does not remember wrongs done against it. Love takes no pleasure in evil but rejoices over the truth. Love always trusts, always hopes, and always continues strong. Wow, that kind of love is way more powerful than saying that, that I love fishing. Yes, and that is the kind of perfect love God has for us and gives to us. Now, let's see what our revelation is for today with our message in the bottle. Right. This week, our revelation is God is love. I, like you said earlier, all those great things about love come from God. That's right. And we're going to hear a story about God's love here in just a bit. Oh, I'm so excited. I love stories. We'll be right back.
light My heart surrenders to your design You gave me purpose, so I give my life I'm giving you all of me Out of the darkness and into your light Today we are going to be telling the story of creation and salvation and talking about how much God loves us. Joining me to help with our story is our good friend, Biden. Hello, everyone. You ready to tell our story? Oh, I sure am, Libni. Let's do it. Okay, here we go. Long, long ago, in the beginning, there was no earth or sky or sea animals. And then God spoke in the darkness. Let there be light. Let there be light. And right away, there was light scattering the darkness and showing the infinite space. So there was nothing, and then God was like, bam, space and light. Yes, that's exactly right. Wow, God is so awesome. Yeah, God made the night and day. He made the oceans and the mountains and the sky, the plants and the animals. Like lions and tigers and bears. I wish God would make me a giant tiger so I could ride him. That would be so awesome. It sure would. Yeah. What giant animal would you have? Hmm, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. I would want a giant sea otter because I could lay on their bellies in the ocean and sleep. Okay. So after God had created this beautiful world full of beautiful things, he created the best thing of all. He made humans, people to be in his family. Oh, yeah, and, and their names, their names were Adam and Eve. Yes, they were the first people. God gave them this beautiful world to live in and be stewards over it. He gave them dominion over it. Um, Libni, what does steward mean? It means that God put them in charge of his creation to take care of it. So God just gave it all to them? Yeah. But, but, but why would he do that? Because God loved Adam and Eve. They were his children. And God is a good father. He loves giving his children gifts. Oh yeah, because my dad, he likes to take me to the store with him and sometimes he'll let me pick out a new toy. So so God, God is like that. Yes, Buttons, he gave the earth to Adam and Eve, but there was an enemy in the garden. Oh. This enemy was tricky. Ew. Yeah, and a liar. That's bad. This enemy was the devil, and he spoke through a snake. Oh, I'd smack him with a golf club. Bam! Oh, that's very specific. Yeah. And what's crazy is Adam and Eve could have told that snake to leave, but they didn't. See, the devil knew that God had to put one tree in the middle of the garden that he told Adam and Eve to not eat the fruit from. And it was a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But, but why did God not with them to eat from that tree? Well, God wanted Adam and Eve to have free will. Well, what does that mean? God wanted them to be able to make choices and decisions for themselves. That way, they could choose to love God and listen to God. Because... Mm, because if they couldn't choose, they would basically be like robots. They'd be like, I love you, God. I am not worthy. You are the best. Compute, compute. Yeah, God didn't want robots. He wanted his children to choose to obey him. That is why he created the one rule to follow. 
But the devil came to Eve through the snake and told her that the fruit from the tree looked really tasty. <gasps> Don't do it, Eve. But Eve told him, God said, if we touch this fruit, we will die. Yeah, they'd be like, oh, oh, ah, oh, I'm, oh, I'm dying. Ah, yeah, yeah, ah, yeah. Ah. But the devil said, surely you will not die. Just touch it. So Eve did. <gasps> but God said not to. Yeah, then the snake told her, if you eat the fruit, you will be just like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. Go on, take a bite. Oh, where's Adam? He needs to come and smack this snake with his golf club. And if he doesn't have one, I'll let him borrow my nine iron. Wha-bam! Hold him one, baby! Eve took a bite from the fruit, then she took some to Adam. Come on, bro! Adam knew it was wrong, but he ate some too. <sighs> When Adam and Eve decided to become like God, by listening to someone other than God, they sinned. By disobeying God, they placed their own will and wisdom above His. God is pure and perfect. His wisdom is perfect. Adam and Eve's rejection of God's wisdom for their own flawed wisdom had terrible consequences. Sin always has consequences. My dad says that sin is kind of like eating an entire cake. It might look good, and it might be fun while you're doing it, but then you get all sick and, oh, and yeah. you feel the effects of your decision later on. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. My tummy was so upset. I ran to the bathroom as fast as I could, and then it was amazing. It oh was my, incredible. let's continue the story. No, oh, okay, yeah. So, so then God had to send them away, right? Yes, because sin separated us from God. Was God sad? He was very sad. He didn't want to be away from Adam and Eve. He loved them, but God had a special plan to get his children back in his family. Jesus! That's right. Through many years, God sent messages to those who followed him, telling them about the coming Son of God, who would be born and live a perfect life. And then, and then Jesus was born. Merry Christmas. Jesus grew up and never sinned. He did what no human had never been able to do. He walked in unity with God the Father and traveled around performing miracles, healing people, and showing the true love of God. And Jesus was God's son, but, but some people, some people didn't believe it. Yes, some people hated Jesus. They wanted to get rid of him. But this was all part of God's plan. Jesus was arrested and leaders decided he was to be crucified and killed. I hate that. Jesus was awesome and he loved everyone, just like how God loves everyone. I just don't understand why some people would hate him so much. Yeah, remember when we said about how God created humans with free will to choose to love God or not? Yeah. Every person has to choose love or to hate. See, love, God's love is the fruit of the Spirit. We have to choose to grow that fruit in our daily encounters with God. But sometimes people can choose to hate. And, and hate is not a fruit of the Spirit. It is not. In fact, it is the opposite of love. Hate is evil. I don't think I, I, don't think I hate anyone. I hate broccoli, but but I love God, I love and it. I always want to do what what He says because I know His plans are best. That's exactly right, Buttons. And speaking of plans, God's plan for salvation was underway. Jesus went to the cross and paid for our sins by dying in our place. When He did that, He took every single sin we could ever commit and destroyed them. Well, bam! Bye, bye, sin. All we have to do is accept Jesus' free gift of forgiveness, and we can be with God and His family. And and Jesus did all of that because He loves us so much, right? Yes. See, God's love is true love. Jesus did everything out of love. I want to be just like Jesus. Me too, Buttons. Thank you all for joining us for our story today. Yeah. See you later. Pastor, our hearts to worship the Lord. He calls us sons and daughters, so we just say, Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Show us who we are and who you are. Show us who you are.
Welcome back, everyone. Seymour, wasn't that a great story of God's love for us? Oh, it sure was. I'm glad that God created this beautiful world for us. And I'm especially glad that he loved us so much to send Jesus to save us. Me too. But Jack, I has a question. Remember earlier when you said that there was good fruit and bad fruit? Well, if love be a good fruit, then what is the bad fruit? Well, that's a good question, Seymour. The bad fruit that is evil is called hate. Hate? Aye, and God does not hate anyone. He loves everyone and wants the absolute best for them. Why is there hate in the world, Jack? Well, it's like our story said. God chose to give us freedom. People have to choose love or hate. When people choose to hate, God is aware 
and he cares. God takes all of the pain on himself and feels it all very deeply. But he offers solutions to the brokenness. And what solution does God give us to to fix the problem? Well, in the Bible, Jesus told us to love our neighbors, love other people like we would love ourselves. The problem is that we're selfish and we think about ourselves and we try to come up with what we think is good. We choose what's best for us and not our neighbors. So without Jesus' love, we can't love others very well. I, it makes me so sad to think that there are people who don't know about the love of Jesus. Me too. And that's why we must do as Jesus said and tell people about his love so they can encounter him like we have. Now maybe you're watching this and you yourself may have never known how much Jesus loves you. And let me tell you something, he has always loved you and has never stopped loving you, no matter what. He chose love and he chose you to be in his family with God forever. If you have never asked Jesus for his free gift of forgiveness and you want to make him your king and savior, it's so easy. Just repeat this after me. Jesus, I choose you. I choose to love you. I choose to follow you. I believe that you are the one true living God. I believe that you died for me and rose again. Thank you for your forgiveness. Forgive me and make me new. Help me to be more like you. Show me who you are. I make you my king. I love you, Jesus. Amen. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it, I am so proud of you. And you are in God's family and he loves you and he will never leave you. Oh, that's so exciting. I love it when people know how much God loves them. Me too, Seymour. Now, it's time to wrap everything up with our final reflection. Yo, ho, the final reflection leads you in the right direction. Yo, ho, the final reflection add it to your treasure collection. This week, for our final reflection, ask yourself, how can I grow the fruit of love in my life? Ask the Holy Spirit to show you ways that you can show God's love to others. I could tell someone that God loves them. Yes, that's true. You can serve people like Jesus did and pray for them as well. Oh yeah, and and if someone needs help or, or healing, you can ask Jesus to heal them. Right. Whatever the Holy Spirit tells you, write it down or draw a picture of it so you'll remember. And Jesus grew the fruit of the Spirit by having daily encounters or daily time with Father God. So we need to do the same. Great advice, Jack. Indeed. Well, let's go to Port Master Smithers for his final thoughts. Smithers! Well, and that's all the time we have. We'll see you next time here on the Sea of Wonder. Time to ship out. Come on now, let's dive it down under.